strawberry. Let me try. Strawberry. Let me try. 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 Well, hello, and wrong background, by the way. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Avalon. Welcome to a brand new episode of On The Line, where I basically just jump on the line. It's pretty self-explanatory. Jump on the line to talk about the latest trending hot stories. So we got some tea, the breaking news on R. Kelly. We're going to get to that in a second. We're going to talk about Cardi B ta- um, giving her two cents about uh, queer baiting, a subject that she feels that she, I guess she just learned that yesterday. Like she learned a lot of LGBTQ terms. We gotta, uh, we're going to talk about the whole uh, Jack McElroy and his revelation about his relationship with um, porn star Doug Dietrich. All that drama came out this week. I want to get my thoughts on that. Um, I did post some of my thoughts on social media and, you know, some of my porn friends, we had a little debate about it, but I definitely want to get my opinion on it. I want to hear your opinions as well. And we're going to talk about Little Nas X and his brand new video um, that he dropped yesterday. Um, so, I mean, call it industry, baby. I was trying to remember what the name was. I don't know how I forgot that damn quick. But nevertheless, so what we're going to do right now, let's get into the gear. So, breaking news. Some tea about R. Kelly came out today. Come on, graphics. Yes, honey. But anyway, okay. So, Kells got found himself in hot water just when he thinking he's going to get out like um, on a technicality like uh, Bill Cosby, who's, in my opinion, just is still guilty. I don't give a fuck what he says. He got on that technicality. He raped the women. He's sticking them roofies up in their drinks and sliding his dick where he need to go. So, I don't care. Yeah, you got over your little technicality. Bill Cosby is still guilty. He should still be in prison. Fuck him and his goddamn pudding pops. Um, now, as far as R. Kelly goes, I know he was probably thinking that he was going to not have to endure, or maybe he thought he was just going to get out and get the same treatment as Bill Cosby. But with the latest revelations that's coming out, I don't see that happening. I think this man going to spend the rest of his life in prison because According to reports, he is facing new allegations in his criminal case out of Chicago, which is about to go to trial next month, including claims, child, now this is the gay porn twist, including claims that he sexually abused a male minor whom he said to have met at, of all places, McDonald's. The ghetto, by the way. But let's continue. So prosecutors in Kelly's federal tax trafficking case filed a bombshell yesterday seeking to introduce evidence they say supports their accusations by a slew of new crimes as they insist Kelly committed, including alleged abuse of a male under the age of 18 in the 2000s. Now, according to the documents obtained by, of course, TMZ, Kelly met a 17-year-old boy in 2006 at a McDonald's whom they say Kelly then invited to a party at a Chicago residence. The kid went with his parents, but the feds say Kelly told him to swing by next time by himself. I don't know why a grown-ass man is telling a child to swing by his house by himself, but it'd be like that, especially with these pedophiles and these kids being so damn naive. Maybe he was thinking he was going to get a record deal. He was trying to get famous or whatever the case was. It was all naive. I'm not putting this on no kid because kids like at that age is being naive. When I was that age, I was naive when it came to grown ass men and you know, having sex with grown men and doing all that kind of shit when I was that age. So I'm not going to fully put it off on this child. 
R. Kelly, as a grown ass man, should know better. So the kid went with, um, so they said, at which point things allegedly turned sexual. The fan said that upon returning visits to Kelly's place and under the guise of trying to help jumpstart the boy's singing career, Kelly, see, and I said it had something to do with music, um, which seems to be the ongoing theme with a lot of his victims. A lot of them um, are, you know, get with Kelly thinking that he's going to make them famous, he's going to mentor them and and help them out with their singing career. And the parents are naive thinking, oh, you know what? I've hit a goal. My, my child's about to be famous. They're not thinking about all this excess stuff. They're not thinking about some man is going to come up in here and start sexually abusing him. Now, I don't know if the parents were aware of R. Kelly with, you know, the back when, you know, Aaliyah and Mary Hud at 15 and the peeing on the girl and all the other stuff. I don't remember the exact timeline when that came out, but that was, I'm sure, around the time when he met this boy, maybe a few years prior to that. So uh, Kelly began a sexual relationship with the boy. Soon after that, prosecutors claimed a 17-year-old introed Kelly to yet another minor male who was either 16 or 17 at the time, and they say Kelly sought to sexually abuse him too. It wasn't until years later, it seems, that something materialized between the second John Doe and Kelly to so save the feds. They say Kelly did, in fact, begin a sexual relationship with him as well, but that he allegedly would command the guy to have sex with women in his orbit and allegedly filmed a lot of those encounters. Same does sprinkled in the filing as well, on top of the ones he's already alleged to have traffic. So between the sex trafficking and meeting this uh, young boy and then recruiting another boy from the, the boy that he already sexually abused, recruiting him to recruit other boys, child, what is you doing? Like, to me, I really wish that R. Kelly would have gotten the help he needed because we all know that as a child, he even admitted to this when he was like, what? When he was a kid, he was sexually abused. I think it was like eight, nine, ten, eleven, in one of those in one of those time frames that he was sexually abused by a, by a woman and hurt people, hurt people. And he's passed that down to sexually abusing other people because it's reliving that trauma. And I know maybe he didn't mean you know I'm not making excuses for him and the sexual abuse, but. I really wish that people specifically in the black community, these are things we need to talk about. We need to talk about sexual abuse. We need to deal with sexual abuse in our community. We need to talk about molestation. We need to, a lot of kids running around here been sexually abused and this, that, and the third. And these are things we definitely need to talk about. And these are things that we definitely need to deal with through therapy and a bunch of other avenues. And I really wish that R. Kelly would have gotten the help that he needed. But you know what? He got all that fame. He got all that money. He was such a talent. Still is amazing talent. He has great music. He has a lot of hits. You know, I know a lot of women in my family who are fans of his music. I've been to many a cookout. They still play the R. Kelly tracks. Me, I don't support it. Like, I don't support R. Um, I don't support uh, Kunye for the reasons that I don't support. And I'm sure y'all know slavery was a choice, all the other shit. That's unforgivable. I don't care how many goddamn Donda records that motherfucker put out. I cannot support someone where y'all go beyond. I can't. It's hard for me to separate the man from the music when a lot of times you listen to them R. Kelly tracks, you hear admissions of guilt when it comes to abuse and, and sexual fetishes and things that he's into. A lot of the freaky shit that he brings up in his music, we hear it a lot of times in his work. So you're pretty much snitching on yourself. And y'all sitting there and think, ooh, he a freak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he a freak, all right. Y'all here freaking on your kids. Hide your kids, hide your wives, hide everybody. So... R. Kelly, I'm sorry that, you know, you know, this, this is unfortunate that this is the outcome of your overall legacy. This is what we remember you as, such an amazing talent, which is a nasty old perverted pedophile. And you're going to get what's coming to you that, you know, they, you know, uh, Bill Cosby does slip through the government's fingers and they mad about that. So, you know, they definitely will make an, an example out of you. And it's unfortunate, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, moving right along. Let's talk about Cardi B. So Cardi B is in the news because there was an article that Rolling Stone recently did, a piece called Why Queer Baiting Matters More Than Ever. And the publication is calling out a slew of stars like, like Nick Jonas, Ariana Grande, Billie Eilish, Madonna, and more for queer baiting, which basically means that whenever you watch a video, you're seeing a lot of you're seeing a lot of famous people kind of um, doing same-sex attractions or there's a sense of homoeroticism in their artwork, but they don't necessarily um, 
in real life practice same sex attraction. So we've seen like people like Nicki Minaj saying that she's bisexual, but you ain't never seen her with no woman. I believe she was queer baiting with that. You had um, Katy Perry, I kissed a girl and I liked it, became famous off of that song. You ain't never seen her um, munching no damn carpet. I'm not saying that we need to go to that point when it needs to be drastic, but there seems to be that women can do girl on girl sexual stuff in videos and it is applauded. Whereas if a guy does it, y'all want to question his sexuality. Y'all don't really bat an eye when the women do it. So Cardi B spoke out because, you know, and she's in the new Normani video. And in the Normani video, you have her basically feeling all up on um, Normani in the video and there's like hair everywhere. And I get it that there was, they were said, it was sexually suggestive, but they were also placing the hair in certain places because at the time Cardi B was pregnant. Well, she still is pregnant, but she was hiding the pregnancy. That was something that wasn't supposed to be revealed. We all found out and watched the BET Awards. So, um, Basically, um, so what they were saying is that, now this is according to people, tweeting about the term which describes when straight individuals imply non-heterosexual encounters to attract members of the LGBTQ plus community to their work. Cardi B, who was 28, wrote that she thinks it forces artists to prove their sexuality. I remember one time, there was like a time where they were like, um, I remember, I forgot who told me the story, but I think it was, oh yeah, it was a friend of mine but it was another situation that happened. I've heard this story previously from someone else where it's like, oh, you go to a gay club and they don't believe that you're gay, so you got to prove that you're gay. I mean, it is kind of stereotypical when you got to do something like that because you don't look what a gay person looks like. But I feel like she needs to understand what we mean by queer baiting. So I'm going to just get to what she said and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. She says, I don't like the new queer baiting word. I feel like it, it pressure, child, I really feel like Ms. Ghetto needs to um, do a spell check before a, you know she hit send. But anyway, I love you, Cardi. But I just gotta call it what it is. I feel like it's press it pressures artists. I'm gonna just read it. I can't read it how she read it because it's gonna hurt my brain. So I'm gonna just fix it the way it needs to be. But I can read the tweets on her on her thing. I feel like it pressures artists to talk about their sexuality or their experiences that they don't feel comfortable speaking about. If an artist kisses a girl on a video, does that mean she gotta show videos and text with other women? And, and put um, at Rolling Stone queer baiting, you do know we was trying to hide the whole baby bump, right? Also, I'm married to a man, but I have expressed so much about my bisexuality and my experiences with girls. All of a sudden, queer baiting is a new word and people use it to the ground. Well, it's not a new word. It's been out for quite a while. But I think, like, Cardi, you're missing the point. I feel like when we're talking about queer baiting, we're not talking about you in the sense of, yes, you're a stripper, you were uh, you were engulfed in a world where you were exposed. I'm not saying that when you're exposed to women, girl on girl action, this that the other, that's going to turn you into a lesbian or turn you bisexual, whatever the case was. But when you go and you work in a strip club environment, you're going to work with women who are sexually fluid, who where they where they promote a lot of sexual fluidity, where it's more open and accepting. And I'm sure that Cardi does seem like someone who I believe is into women and into men. And I'm sure that is a turn on for Offset. And I'm sure that there have been times when Offset and her have had a third female up in there. I ain't saying y'all did some T.I. tiny shit, but I know I'm sure that y'all had a situation where you have brought some women into the bedroom and y'all fooled around with a girl, whatever the case was, and Cardi and got off on her girls, whatever the case was. And to me, Cardi is an exception to the situation. We have people like Nick Jonas, who's posing on the cover of gay magazines with his pants open and no shirt on. And you're pretty much a straight man, but you're baiting gay guys. It's him, it's Zac Efron, it's Justin Timberlake back in the day. There's, <coughs> excuse me, there's been a lot of that, which we see in our society. Whereas when we look at someone like a little Nas X, who is actually a gay man who's perpetuating, not, not, I shouldn't say perpetuating, but who's putting sexual visuals in his videos where he's in his recent video, Dancing Butt Naked. We'll get into that in a moment. When he's perpetuating, when he's presenting this visual, when he's an out and proud get black gay man doing giving us what we should be getting from gay artists rather than straight people who's trying to pander to us for our gay dollars because they know the gay audience is the most loyal. 
That's what we're saying is where the problem is. That's where the queer baiting comes in. That's what we have the issue of queer baiting. So we're not saying that, well, if you're someone who is pan, who is pandering to us or who is, if you are queer in your, in your life, I, I find nothing wrong with you expressing yourself in that way. But when you have Madonna make it out with Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera at the VMAs, and then as a as what she said was a joke, but that was poor timing on her part, where she's going around saying, did it first, when Little Nas, with Little Nas X at the BET Awards kissing a guy on stage, to me that takes away from the movement in which we're trying to do. Here is a gay black man who is breaking boundaries and pushing the envelope, who is the first, in my opinion, that I can think of, mainstream black gay guy who's in history, who's on a stage, who's performing unapologetically and is able to live in his truth and do it through his art. So when you have a cis white woman who's been married three times, or was it twice? Doesn't matter. The, as, as you know, who's been in many relationships with men and been married and said the other, and you have used and you have you know you have used sex to be provocative in your work. So when you do that, it takes away from the core point of what we're trying to do. So that's what we're saying when it comes to talking about queer baiting. So I think Cardi needs to understand that that is what we mean. We're not saying that okay. So when you perpetuate a certain thing, that you're not oh you you know, these straight girls being gay. That's what we're talking about when we get to that point. So I think she needs to understand that's what we're talking about. So I feel like she missed the point with the uh, the article from Rolling Stone. And that is definitely something that I feel like we as a people need to talk about and is an open debate discussion that we need to go on and on. And I want to say this, like um, you see in the lower third and the bottom, share your thoughts at Chris I want, OFFI1. That's my Instagram. That's my Twitter. You know, I did... Um, um, you could also write it in the comments because this is going to this is streaming live on my YouTube channel. So this is definitely um, I would love to see you guys um, give your thoughts on this um, in the comments section as well. When you check out because if you're not watching it live and you check it out later, definitely want to um, hear your thoughts on that. Now, speaking of little Nas X, I definitely want to talk about his provocative new video uh, for industry Bay, uh, industry baby, which features Jack Harlow. I know a lot of people had an issue with Jack Harlow being in the video. And I saw all the comments, how you got these black gay men, or you got all these black men dancing naked and provocatively and twerking and all this other stuff in the showers. And Jack Harlow gets to be masculine. I'm like, here y'all go with the buck breaking slavery, um, analogies. And I'm like, chow, if y'all don't sit y'all tired asses down with all that overreaching narrative bullshit, the fact of the matter was, the video, in my opinion, was him poking in front of the whole, him going to jail because of the whole Satan shoes and that sort of thing. But also, he's shedding light on hypermasculinity, particularly in Black men, and poking in front of that. Where it's like, you can be hypermasculine, but you can also be feminine, which you saw a lot of that in the choreography that I was looking at when in the video. So, um, what I don't understand is why people tend to think that Little Nas X can't sit and show you different sides of himself that we can see him okay in prison with the paper i know a lot of people saying oh this reminds him of the lady gaga beyonce telephone video but i feel like it takes it a step further and shout out to the jason momoa lookalike that y'all saw in the, in the clip um there was a sort of an assortment of dances that Lil Nas, that Nazi was put in the video. And I didn't mind Jack Harlow being in the video in some sorts. I just felt like it, it felt a little out of place. In my opinion, I thought maybe it would have been great if they would have put a gay rapper in the video that would have, I didn't say like a saucy Sierra Tan or somebody, but I'm just saying like, y'all could have had two gay rappers in the video if you wanted to go in in a way where they could, where they can kind of really up the sex, sexuality stuff. And I saw he was, um, he's talking about that he wants to perform the song with, because Jack Harlow was like, um, Nas came up with the treatment. Um, and if he wanted him to be naked in the showers, he would have been naked in the showers. He said, well, if I would have known that, let's redo the video, which I thought was hilarious. But um, also what I was hearing is that they want to perform the song naked at the uh, MTV VMAs that's popping up, I think next month or in September. Because usually I think the, VA, the VMAs always come on in like the last day, like the last day of the month of August. I always think it comes on like literally towards Labor Day weekend. 
but it's going to be, usually it has to fall, I know it has to fall on a Sunday. So if they perform this naked, I know they're not going to allow that, first of all, on, on the, the on, uh, you know, on the awards. So that's not going to happen. But I'm sure they'll probably be up there with no clothes on or something controversial because Nas is always pushing the controversial envelope. And I haven't seen someone come out the gate this exciting since, you know, my provocative, you know, the mother of all provocatory isms. I don't know that's not a word, but I just made it up. Madonna, like Madonna's always pushed the controversial, you know, controversy and always been in the center of it and always pushed the envelope in regards to her music and her art. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does with this. And look, out of this whole thing, he did a good thing. He, um, you know, he, um, what is it? I'm trying to find the words. He basically raised money for the bail project which, you know, is, um, which t- helps in cash bail in the U.S. And I heard so far when I reported on this earlier, um, he raised about $21,000. So for those who are out here saying that he's pushing this agenda or pushing this narrative of um, like poking from the prison and making things about sexuality, but I said, uh, I don't know if you know, but there are men in prison who are in relationships. There are men in prison who are fucking who are getting their dicks, like there's sex going on in jail. So I don't know why people think that he's glor, like when you expose people to things that are going on in prison, that he's glorifying it. So I just don't understand that concept. I love the video. I love the song. I'm kind of torn about the song because it was co-produced by Kanye. And you know how I feel about Kanye. If you've been following my podcast and something, I do go more into my opinion on the video at length on my podcast, The Chris Avalon Show, which you could definitely check the link in my bio over on Instagram, which is the same handle that we been posted, Chris Avalon OFFI1. So if you want to definitely like and subscribe to my podcast, you definitely can do that. It's on Apple Music. It's on all the different streamings. I have it up there in my link on Instagram, my link tree, I should say, by the way. So shout out to Lil Nas X. I'm definitely looking forward to this Montero album. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he has up his sleeve, not only for his performance at the VMAs, which I'm sure they're going to invite him. He's like the biggest, most controversial thing right now. VH1, MTV, I don't know why I keep thinking about VH1. They're all on the same goddamn Viacom umbrella. But I'm actually looking forward to MTV really... Y'all be a fool not to have him on there, number one. Just like BET, I never expected BET of all places to have um, him perform. At, um, on their establishment, but yet yeah, it happened, and I was shocked. But I live for every moment, so I'm really, really looking forward to okay, you know, him performing, and I'm sure they are going to have him performing at uh, the VMAs. I'm looking forward to the new album whenever that drops, and what are the future singles he has coming out? I just hope you don't just release every damn single before we get the full album because I actually want an element of surprise to hear some tracks I haven't heard. Like I want to hear the album as a collective, and not just being thrown seven, eight singles before we get a, a full album because this is like what single number four so far this year from this album. So yeah. So now let's get into our, I believe our um <clears throat> our final topic, which is the story of Jack McEnroth. Now I'm sure some of you will wonder who the heck is Jack McEnroth. So Jack McEnroth was uh someone who um is a fashion designer. He appeared on um Project Runway. I'm not I don't remember which season. But he had to lead, I think it was like season six or season four or something or another. Um, in the earlier season, Project Runway, back when it was on uh, Bravo. Now it's back on Bravo, but when it was on Bravo, because there was a period where it was on Bravo, then it was on, um, then it went to um, another network, and then it went back to Bravo. It was on Lifetime for a period. And then it went to Bravo again. I haven't watched the show since then, but I do miss Heidi and Tim, but I know Heidi and Tim are doing uh, Making the Cut. The season two is currently playing on Amazon. They release it every Friday. So I think they're up to their third episode right now. But nevertheless, back to the subject at hand. So um, Jack McEnroe, who I had no idea was 52 years old, um, basically the same age as J-Lo. Shout out to Jennifer Lopez, who turned 52 today, by the way. Um, And saying that the, the model the fashion designer and um, turned porn star 
um, posted a candid heartfelt apology to his ex, Dolph Dietrich. Now, and he details his struggles with drug addiction, including his battles with crystal meth. Now, when I heard this story, I literally gagged because I remember hearing back in May that there was a story of, uh, I heard about a breakup and then I had heard recently on social media that Dolph was talking about how his he came home, I guess he was doing a gig or something. He, I think it was, uh, he went and did, um, oh my God, it was one of those porn events that he did with uh, Ray, was it Ray Dolph? A um, couple of porn stars um, that he did. And then what also with um, Alex Tikis and a whole bunch of other people who I know, by the way. Um, he did, um, he was doing like a, a, it was like a live sex show, whatever the case was. Then he came back home to New York, come to find out his house was cleaned out, shit was stolen. And he went, I know he briefly mentioned it on social media. So... Dietrich, oh, I was surprising to me, always wound up taking the high road and remained silent about the drama, both online and in an in interview that he did with the gay goods, doing which he wished nothing but the best for his ex. But McEnroth has taken to social media to reveal the gag of all gags where he talked about what had happened. So he said, um, now I'm going to read you a bit of it. If you want to go and read the whole full detail of everything that went on, that went down, which he revealed on the 18th of this month, um, you can do that on his um, Twitter, which I believe is, if I can pull it up, um, at Jack McElroy. So you want to go over there and read the whole thing, you definitely can do that. But he wrote, I'm a recovering drug addict. I need to come clean about my specific actions towards Adolf Dietrich and others with 100% honesty. Um humility and embarrassment, but with the hope of becoming a better man for it. Meth binges made me a shitty person, taking copious amounts of Xanax to come down from the drugs that was eventually took that, that um, was that, well, hold on, from, the, from drugs was what eventually took me down and almost killed me. I'm sober today. I'm not perfect in any way, but every day I am making amends to all the people I affected and treated poorly. Today, I am 46 days without drugs or benzos. I had a hard cider three days ago because I couldn't sleep, but that is still a relapse. I have to be totally forthcoming about my, any mind-altering substance. In the midst of my addiction, I hurt many people, but most of all, I hurt my boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, Dolph Dietrich. The list of hard things I did is long and disgraceful, but in a tangible effort to make reparations, I'm listing all the things I did and all the untruths that he, so he can have peace of mind and begin to repair the damage I inflicted. So here we go. While I was high on drugs, I tormented and terrorized Dolph slash Topher, that's his good name, and made him feel unsafe in his own apartment. I broke into his apartment while he was out of town and took many of his belongings, clothes, computer, electronics, leather gear, etc. He trusted me and I betrayed that trust. He also talked about how he sent unsolicited photos to, um, the, you know, you try to get him um, evicted from his apartment. It was, um, it was just a lot that, um, he, you know, he basically put out there. Um, he even went and told the gossip blog that his boyfriend was a pedophile, which was 100% bullshit. He says it hurts him today, and I'm forever remorseful about that. He also got Dietrich banned from his gym for nudity and sent compromising photos of him to the gym's management. Um, you know, he went on and, and on and on and said... I jammed the lock to his apartment, preventing access while his dog was inside and forced him to call an emergency locksmith. I terrorized him with threats and the promise of causing him harm. He also s revealed several other examples of behavior and um, said that he's committed to rectifying anything that he can and saying that he can't make excuse for anything he did, saying he was under the influence of meth and Xanax. It does not relinquish me from culpability. And I actually agree with that. And I have to say, at the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. Um, he has to definitely prove that, you know, he can day by day make himself a better person. But to me, I think of it as like, I know he's saying the, the, the culpability and, and drugs as an excuse. And I understand meth is like one of the worst things since sliced bread. And it is definitely, in my opinion, something that is a horrible pandemic in our community, in the LGBT, in the, not even, I'm not going to go LGBT, I'm not going to go with all that, because I don't know if lesbians is taking meth, maybe y'all are, maybe you aren't, but let's specifically focus on the gay community. Meth is a huge problem in our community, it is something that needs to be reckoned with, it is something that needs to be rectified, it is, need, it is something that needs to be fleshed out. I can't tell you the many times I go into Chelsea and I see a lot of homeless queer people, and y'all are out there literally in public, in daylight, sucking on that glass ding -a like it's nothing. And 
I understand like people need to get high or whatever the case was, but it's just the overall like y'all don't give a fuck. And then just seeing the the side effects of what it does and why I kind of was a bit harsh in the beginning when I posted this on my page to my grab y'all popcorn because this shit is messy. It is messy. Like I can't. Well, this is somebody's friend. Somebody's di- okay. Great. Good and granted. But guess what? Why are we so busy trying to? Um, um, why are we taking up for the the perpetrator and the person who was the victim? I haven't heard you have that. I haven't heard people have that same energy. So to me, it's just like Topher. Well, I should say Dolph had to endure and deal with a lot of shit. It makes you wonder, like, okay, hopefully, you know what? They can go their separate. You know, they've gone their separate ways and not in a relationship anymore. So um, Dolph can figure out what it is that attracts him to shitty men or men with these type of issues. Because they were at one point they were in business together. They had started like a porn company and they were doing videos. I remember seeing that they had like the joint thing together on Twitter and they basically were creating content. And they had a little studio in New York. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm sure that's done. Um and to me it was like y'all played their they played their whole relationship out on social media, which I guess is what happened because you're if you're a porn star, you you know, you need the social media to pretty much um, bring awareness to your business and you need to bring in the revenue for the business. So, I, and I also think that, you know what, go, go beyond the whole th- um, drug use thing and, and that sort of thing. I hope that Jack is in therapy and really figuring out what the root of why he took such drastic measures to ruin the life of someone you're supposed to be in a relationship with. That someone is supposed to be your partner, someone that you love, that y'all was saying y'all love each other and all this other shit on social media. What made you, in the fiber and the core of your being, made you feel the need to really try to destroy someone that you're supposed to be in love with, that's supposed to be your protector, your lover, someone you're in a relationship with. So there's deep there's something deep down in your core that you need to reconcile with that made that have made you want to get to that point. Because I truly believe drugs is not an excuse. That we're not going. This ain't a, um, you know. This is not a Jamie Foxx song. We're not going to blame it on the alcohol. We're not going to blame it on no kind of substances. Because I truly believe that drugs reveals who you truly are. When you when you take whatever kind of drugs or substances, alcohol, whatever the case is. Drugs reveals who you truly are because it's you're letting down your inhibitions. So I do not feel like drugs make you evil. Drugs can make you do certain things or make you a certain way. I do feel like that when you take drugs, it reveals a part of yourself that you may have kept suppressed or kept hidden and shows who you truly are because the inhibitions aren't there. That that shield that we all walk around with where we hold back a part of our true authentic selves. There's some people that walk around with their true authentic selves all day and don't give a fuck, but drugs helps enhance that. So um, I'm glad that Jack is getting the help that he needs. I'm glad that he has come to terms with a lot of what he's dealt with and he's reconciling um, a lot of what he's done and coming to terms with how he treated his ex. And I hope that they both can get to a peaceful place where I'm sure they'll run into each other in the porn social circles and they can be cordial. Hi, you know, and keep it moving. Let's not collaborate with each other. Let's not do any of that shit. This is like, you know, hi, how you doing? And keep it moving, like I stated. And I'm hoping that they both will get some sort of therapy because what um, what um, Dolph responded to said a lot. We basically said, because he quoted um, the response and tweeted McEnroe's statement five minutes after he put it up on social media that day. He said, it's time to set the record straight. Many of you know this year I was robbed, terrorized, harassed, and slandered. Police, courts, restraining order. I'm a victim of domestic violence. Today, the man who perpetrated these acts on me made a statement via Jack McEnroe. And what he mentioned was he was he's a victim of domestic violence. That is another conversation that we in our community need to have. That the gay community, we deal with situations of physical, emotional, uh, substance abuse, any kind of abuse, sexual abuse, like there's sexual assault that happens in our community as well. These are things that we don't deal with. These are things that we don't talk about. And I know a lot of people feel afraid to go to the police because, um, you know, 
the thing I was talking about, hypermasculinity, that, you know, it shows that you're a sign of weakness if you've been sexually abused or assaulted by another man. So that's not a thing that's possible. It seems that people act like a man on man um, situations in that way. So like I said before, I definitely hope that both are in therapy and they're getting the help that they need. And um, they'll learn day by day because, you know, sobriety of any kind is a day by day situation that I know a lot of people who have drug addictions struggle with. And it's not easy to wing yourself off of, of crystal meth. Like I have, why, why I get so hard on it is because I have a, one of my really good friends what has been in an on again, off again relationship with someone who struggles with meth addiction. And the many of times that he's on the phone and he's telling me things and I try to give the advice and you don't want to listen because you want to quote a Barry J. Blige song or any other sappy ass R&B song. And I'm like, girl, you are not Jasmine Sullivan. You are not Mary J. Blige. You need to relax. Stop with all that, that another sad love song bullshit. It's like at a point you attract the misery because it gives you some sort of endorphins or excitement or whatever the case is. And I ain't gonna reveal who the friend is, but I just feel like, um, a lot of times you try to give that advice of what you feel that they should do, that you could do better. You don't need to involve yourself. Maybe, you know, you can't force someone who's not ready to get the help that they need, get that help. They have to reach a certain rock bottom. And I already know the latest on that situation. I'm my, my business. So I'm just like, because then if I say something, then all of a sudden they get back together and it's some drama. So all you can do is love them from afar and hope for the best and give them a little advice and be a listening ear when they need to. But sometimes, you know, you feel helpless. You don't know what to do. And it's like, what do you do? Do I, like, I have to maybe, you know, speak to some people that I know that are case managers that deal with people who, you know, in within our community who have meth addictions and this and other. Like, I, and I know people who are case workers who deal with gay people with mental health or drug addiction and that sort of thing. So it's like, I would have to just hit them up and try to get that advice. It's like, what do I do? But it's like, yeah, you could just give the advice and hope for the best. And if they are willing to take it, then that's great. If they're not, sometimes you gotta let people fall on their ass and they gotta learn the hard way for them to get, for it to get to their thick skull. But um, I think that's all I gotta say on this whole matter. Um, Good luck to the both of them, as I said before, and, and hopefully they get the help that they need. But anyway, thank you all for watching this episode of On The Line. Tune in next time whenever I jump on the line or something amazing pops up or whatever the case is, I will definitely jump on here and see you all. Please log on to Tribe for some exclusive content, as well as hit up my Instagram, Chris Avalon OFF51. It has my link tree on there, which you can uh, click and like and subscribe to all of my social media handles. Everything is on there. You know, EJ set it up. I set up some stuff. So it's all up there. Definitely go check it out. Click like, subscribe on this thing and share this video. And also don't be afraid to leave your comments on the following topics that we just discussed. So until next time, all I got to say is ciao, darling. dare you, Mr. Spears. You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh. Oh. This is for faggots.